There's a killer on the prowl in the U.S. today. In the next 60 seconds, another life will be taken. Many people are unaware that they are just one heartbeat away from becoming the next victim. The killer is heart disease. Dr. Chauncey Crandall is a board-certified cardiologist and author of the book, The Simple Heart Cure, the 90-day program to stop and reverse heart disease. Dr. Crandall knows very well the destructive effects of heart disease. He sees it every day in the operating room. He never expected at age 48 to come face to face with his own life and death struggle. One day I was at the airport and I lifted my bag off the conveyor belt and I experienced pain in my left shoulder. And as I continued to walk, the pain intensified and then I put my suitcase in my car and the pain went away. The next morning, the nagging pain returned and Dr. Crandall took himself to the emergency room. But I was a cardiologist and I didn't have heart disease in my family. I wasn't a smoker, I wasn't overweight, I carried on an active lifestyle, but I was under a tremendous amount of stress in the operating room. Doctors discovered that one of his coronary arteries was 99% blocked. In just 48 hours, he went from heart doctor to heart patient. And this blockage was right at the beginning of that artery. And when you have a blockage at that site, you usually die. So even a cardiologist can be misled concerning the diagnosis of heart disease. Coronary artery disease is the most common type of heart disease. This year, it will take the lives of more than 370,000 Americans. It can be hidden for years without any warning sign. But it develops over a period of time, and we develop what are called plaques. They're really like blisters that line the wall of the artery, and they rupture. And this will form a blood clot that will cause the heart attack. And what's putting so many of us at risk? It's our lifestyle. The typical American diet is loaded with sugar and filled with salt and trans fats. On top of that, we just aren't very active. Many Americans sit at a desk all day and then go home and sit in front of a screen all evening. And now add in the effects of stress. A survey by the American Psychological Association says more Americans than ever are reporting they are stressed out. If this sounds like your life, you need some changes fast, and you need to be aware of the warning signs of a heart attack. It could be a simply uh, increased fatigue over a period of weeks. It could be a mild pain. It could be a pain of indigestion. It might just be a pain in the shoulder or the neck or the jaw. These are uh, signs and symptoms that often precede heart attacks. If you begin to experience any of these symptoms, don't ignore them. Time is critical. Every second you delay could mean the difference between life or death. Call 911 right away. Don't drive yourself to the hospital. Have an ambulance take you there. Once at the hospital, medical teams will evaluate your condition and take the necessary steps to save your life. We now know that if we can open the artery, the artery that is blocked due to a heart attack, there is a critical period of time so that we can salvage heart muscle. And that critical period is one to six hours. So if you can get to the emergency room, they quickly evaluate you, we can open that artery and save your heart. If you think this is just a problem for middle-aged men, think again. The grim reality is that more women die each year from heart disease and heart attacks than men. Dr. Leslie Cho is the director of the Cleveland Clinic's Women's Cardiovascular Center. She knows that heart disease is something women can't ignore. Women actually have an increased rate of dying from heart disease because they show up to hospitals later with their heart attack. Frequently, they think it's something else, or they actually have atypical symptoms. The symptoms of a heart attack may be far more subtle in women than men. Chest pain and discomfort are the most common signs for both. However, women are more likely to experience shortness of breath, 
nausea, vomiting, and pain in the back, jaw, or neck. The number one sort of rule I think to go by is if you are not feeling right in terms of chest pressure, shortness of breath, fatigue, it's best to let your doctors figure it out instead of trying to doctor yourself. You should know the risk factors for having a heart attack, smoking, early menopause, a family history of heart disease, and high LDL and low HDL cholesterol. If you have any of these, you should work with your doctor. Reducing your weight, getting to ideal body weight, eating a proper diet, having your blood pressure under control, your diabetes under control, having your stress improved, sleeping properly every day. These are all part of the recovery process after having a heart attack. Being a cardiologist is a high stress occupation, but Dr. Crandall says his faith in God gave him the strength he needs to meet those challenges each day. Well, the key part for my recovery in my event was the power of God in my life. I prayed, I went to church, I had a purpose. So heart disease is not a death sentence. It is a diagnosis that can be treated and reversed. Every day, your heart is hard at work, pumping blood through your body's 60,000 miles of blood vessels. It's something we all take for granted until we feel a skip beat or our heart is racing inside our chest. Protecting your heart means not ignoring these occurrences. They can be harmless or warning signs of trouble ahead. Welcome to the Cleveland Clinic. At the Miller Family Heart and Vascular Institute, People come from around the world to be treated for some of the most advanced cases of heart disease. It's the nation's largest cardiovascular practice and has been rated number one for over 20 years by U.S. News and World Report. Dr. Bruce Lindsay has over 30 years of experience treating patients with arrhythmias. He's an expert when it comes to treating irregular heartbeats. The symptoms people have kind of depend on which heart rhythm problem they experience. Some people have just extra beats and they perceive them as skip beats. For other types of heart rhythm problems, uh, the heart may take off, might be very sudden where it just takes off and races. Here's a look at what happens each time your heart beats. An electrical impulse is triggered at the top chambers of your heart. This charge travels around in the walls of the heart causing it to contract. This action sends blood through the lower chambers of the heart and out to the rest of the body. A healthy heart repeats this cycle over 100,000 times a day. Atrial fibrillation can feel like a heart that is out of control. Instead of pounding along at an even rate that you could tap out, it's skipping around where it speeds up and slows down and is very disconcerting to the patients. It's estimated that between three to six million Americans have atrial fibrillation. Who is at risk for developing this runaway heartbeat? People over the age of 50, with a family history of irregular heartbeats, who are overweight, who have high blood pressure, who drink alcohol, and suffer from sleep apnea. It's important to know that untreated atrial fibrillation can be life-threatening. The biggest danger with atrial fibrillation is stroke risk. Go to your doctor, tell the doctor about what you're experiencing, let them evaluate it, and they can determine whether this is something that is really benign and doesn't require any treatment, or whether it really does reflect some underlying problem that could be dangerous to you, and then with the right treatment, that danger can be eliminated. What seems like signs of just getting old could be the warning signs of heart valve disease. Each year, an estimated five million Americans are diagnosed with it. And like most heart conditions, it develops slowly over time. Many people don't realize that they have a problem until they are in the more advanced stages of this disease. Here's how the heart valves work. As blood circulates through the four chambers of your heart, it travels in one direction 
to ensure that blood doesn't travel backwards, four different valves open and close at just the right time. The two conditions that can happen to a valve is either it can get blocked, and the medical term is stenosis, or the valve can get leaky, and the medical term is regurgitation. Dr. Joseph Sabic, in his 20 plus years as a heart surgeon, has performed over 9,000 operations. Many of these operations have been to repair the valves of the heart. You know, as we age, it's not uncommon that that valve gets calcified. It gets hard. It can get like a seashell. It can get like a rock. And so those leaflets don't open anymore. And that leads to obstruction. And that allows the blood to go backwards. That can happen for several reasons. There can be dilatation, so the leaflets no longer touch, and that allows blood to leak in between the leaflets. Sometimes the valve can get infected, can lead to destruction of part of the valve, or the valve can prolapse or become flail, and that's when the leaflets go backwards. The result is the heart has to work a lot harder. Everyday activities suddenly become very challenging. Patients will develop shortness of breath, they're starting to have heart failure. And so the normal activities, they get very winded. If things go on very badly, patients can even have chest discomfort and chest pain. If you are experiencing any of these warning signs, the time to act is now. There's kind of a golden moment when you want to intervene on a bad valve, whether it's blocked or leaky. And the longer you wait, the worse the patient is going to get. When patients start knowing that they're having problems, it's a good idea just to go see their primary care doctor, get examined, someone's gonna hear a heart murmur, and then that will start the evaluation. The aorta is the largest artery in your body. With each heartbeat, oxygen-rich blood is sent throughout your body. This vital part of your circulatory system keeps you alive. Dr. Lars Svensson of the Cleveland Clinic has helped pioneer surgical treatments and techniques that are saving lives around the world. Even with these advancements, early detection of aneurysms is critical. Most aneurysms do not cause symptoms until they cause extreme pain and either they burst, uh, rupture, or they cause aortic dissection. And about 40% of patients with aortic dissection die immediately. And then the risk of death is about one to 3% per hour until they get to surgery, and the risk of surgery in the emergency situation is much higher. One of the best ways to help your doctor determine your risk for developing an aneurysm is to know your family's medical history. Has anyone in your family died from an aneurysm? What is your overall health? Do you have high blood pressure or hardening of the arteries? If you smoke or are overweight, you have an even greater risk of developing an aneurysm. Based on your risk assessment, an X-ray, CAT scan, or ultrasound can help detect an aneurysm. Your doctor will evaluate how severe it is and if surgery is your best option. If detected early and treated, patients can go on to enjoy a normal life. Well, that's one of the joys of being a heart surgeon. We obviously save patients' lives who are in an acute situation like aortic dissection. We not only save their lives, we improve their quality of life, we improve their longevity. Getting treated in the early stages of heart disease could make a big difference. In some cases, it could even save your life. Remember, your life is a gift from God to be enjoyed and cherished. Act now and stop heart disease from robbing you of all that God has intended for you. We get up, eat breakfast, drink a cup of coffee, and pop a pill. Every morning, this is the daily routine for many Americans. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, three out of five adults in the U.S. take a daily prescription medication. Most of these drugs are for high blood pressure, diabetes, and conditions related to heart disease. While there are many benefits to these medications, there can also be some hidden dangers inside your medicine cabinet. 
Susie Cohen is a licensed pharmacist for over 20 years, writer of the nationally syndicated column Dear Pharmacist, and author of several top-selling books, including Drug Muggers, Which Medications Are Robbing Your Body of Essential Nutrients and the Natural Ways to Restore Them. As America's most trusted pharmacist, she wants to help people understand that it's going to take more than just a pill to enjoy a healthy life. I would notice that my patients at the pharmacy would come in week after week and they were just ending up taking more and more medications. They weren't taking less. And it took me many years later to realize that the reason for this was because the medications have a side effect and that side effect goes on to get diagnosed as a new disease. Topping the list of prescription drugs that most take are those used to treat hypertension or high blood pressure. Known as the silent killer, one in three Americans have high blood pressure. That's 70 million people who have an increased risk of stroke, heart attack, and kidney failure. Untreated, high blood pressure could cut your life short. Blood pressure is just the pressure of your blood vessels with the blood coursing through it. So if you think of a garden hose and you kink that, the pressure in the hose builds up and when you unkink it, the pressure smooths out and, and it lifts. And that's the same thing in the human body. Blood pressure pills are extremely good at their job. They will lower your blood pressure, but inevitably they affect every part of your body and every organ. So before you know it, your blood pressure is perfect, but you're having all these other side effects. While it's important to get your high blood pressure under control, just taking medications alone could be setting the stage for other severe health issues. The biggest secret to people is that medications are thieves. They rob your body blind of nutrients, essential nutrients that you need to run metabolic pathways all through your body so you can walk, so you can see, so you can talk, so you can read. These pathways are going on behind the scenes. And if they don't know that their body just got robbed by the medication they took, they go to the doctor and they get diagnosed with a new illness. This compounds the problem because now the doctor will prescribe a new medication, never thinking that the first one that was prescribed caused the second problem. It's like a medication merry-go-round and you can't get off. And it's not just high blood pressure medications that can cause you problem. There's a long list of other prescription medications and over-the-counter drugs that can also put your health at risk. There are tens of thousands of medications on the market and they go by various names, but they all do the same thing. They have the potential to rob your body blind. And as an example of that, popular antacids and acid blockers used for reflux and heartburn, these drugs can steal pretty much every nutrient from your body because it's affecting the pH in your gut. And when you do that, you can no longer extract the nutrients from your foods. And these same drugs also inhibit the absorption or basically prevent you from fully absorbing your medications. And this happens 24 seven, even while you sleep. It's what I call the drug mugger effect. And it's not just the medications that affect us. Everything that we eat and drink has a big impact on our health. So maybe it's that favorite coffee drink loaded with sugar or a fast food lunch filled with salt. If you want to stop getting mugged, you have to think beyond the pharmacy and begin making better food choices. First and foremost, I would suggest that you stop eating highly refined sugars and carbohydrates. That's the first thing you can do that would make a very big impact. Instead of soda, drink water or tea. That would be great. Even herbal tea would be better than black tea and green tea because there's less caffeine. So white table salt has no minerals. It's just a backbone of sodium chloride. Switching your salt shaker to an unrefined type of sea salt that has color to it provides minerals, over 80 different minerals, and just a little bit of salt. After you switched your salt and ditched the refined sugars, Susie says you need to eat green. Start by eating salads topped with some of these nutrient-rich ingredients. Tomatoes. They're packed with lycopene, an antioxidant that will protect your heart and reduce your risk of heart disease. Next, add some carrots. 
One half cup of carrots is more than a day's worth of vitamin A. It's good for your eyes and overall health. Your mother was right. Eating broccoli is good for you. It's a great way to add back vitamins and minerals that you need. Be creative with your toppings. Throw in some fruits and nuts too. A salad is rich in minerals that are necessary for heart health and cardiovascular system. So something as simple as a salad every day would go leaps and bounds in terms of helping you improve your health. And it's not just your heart health. Minerals support the body in over 300 metabolic reactions. You know how everybody tells you to eat an apple a day? Well, I say eat an orange a day because the orange gives you vitamin C. And vitamin C keeps your blood vessels and your arteries and your capillaries all very elastic so they bend. They don't stiffen and cause atherosclerosis. And if you need a healthy snack, you might be surprised by this one, almonds. They're some of the healthiest nuts you can eat and they're even mentioned in the Bible. When you look at the Bible, you see mentions of almonds and almonds can support a healthy heart. Almonds contain a little bit of salicin, which is similar to aspirin, so it helps with your blood and the thinning of your blood. So if you're gonna reach for a snack, reach for almonds. The best nutrients for you to help with blood pressure and heart disease include magnesium, because it helps with regulation of your heartbeat, CoQ10, because it powers up your heart and makes it beat stronger, and vitamin D, because it works from head to toe to support your immune system, reduce inflammation, and support healthy blood vessels. You can begin to build a healthy heart today. Start by consulting with your doctor and find out what drugs may be robbing your body of the nutrients you need. Keep up to date with a list of all the drugs you take and get rid of the ones you don't really need. And get back all those lost nutrients by eating foods that are rich in vitamins and minerals. Start by adding a salad to your dinner table tonight. You might be on a dozen medications thinking, there's no hope for me. But trust me, there is hope and there are simple things that you can do right now to make your life better. Please don't ever give up. It's everywhere. It's in the foods we eat. Our bodies produce it. Our brains are made up of it, about 25%. It's vital to your health. Without it, your body wouldn't be able to produce many of the hormones you need to survive. It's cholesterol. And for years, we've been told that we need to lower it. Dr. Steven Sinatra is a cardiologist and co-author of the controversial book, The Great Cholesterol Myth. He's on a mission to set the record straight. What does cholesterol do? Well, first of all, the brain is made up of a lot of cholesterol. A lot of neurotransmitters in the brain are derived from cholesterol. When sunlight hits the skin, it forms vitamin D. I mean, our sex hormones come from cholesterol, our bile acids come from cholesterol. So cholesterol does a lot of good things for the body. With over 40 years of treating heart disease, Dr. Sinatra believes we have spent too much time chasing the wrong enemy. Well, a true villain of heart disease. It's not cholesterol. We think it's cholesterol, but it really isn't. It's sugar. Americans have a sugar addiction. The typical person consumes about three pounds of sugar a week. This out of control sugar consumption sets off a deadly chain reaction in our bodies. You know, when a male's waist starts to go from 32 to 34 to 35, that's really a wake up call. And we need to really focus on what we're eating. As our waistlines grow and Americans become more obese, so does our risk for a long list of diseases. These include Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, and at the top of that list, heart disease. If we can't burn our calories with the insulin, then we get insulin resistance, and then we put on more weight. And the problem is, millions and millions of people are insulin resistant, and many of those people will become diabetic. And we know that diabetes is one of the major factors in the genesis of coronary heart disease. According to a recent study published by the Journal of the American Medical Association, nearly 50% of adults living in the US have diabetes, 
or a pre-diabetic condition. Diabetes greatly increases your risk of heart disease by causing your body to be in a chronic state of inflammation. Inflammation we face every day. I mean, I mean literally, I mean, uh, if we cut our finger, if we stub our toe, if we pump into a wall, you know, an area can get inflamed. But inflammation is key because too much sugar can elicit an inflammatory response. If you've had your cholesterol tested, you have probably heard of HDL and LDL. Cholesterol comes in different sizes, shapes, and densities. And these wax-like particles are mostly harmless until they become oxidized. If you've seen a rusted piece of metal or an apple slice that has turned brown, then you have seen the effects of oxidation. This process occurs in our bodies as well. If we look at LDL, uh, in an unoxidized state, it's harmless. It doesn't do anything. But if it comes oxidized from, let's say, pesticides or insecticides or carbon monoxide or excess sugar, if it becomes oxidized, it can become angry. And when it becomes angry, well, then it can create an inflammatory state, and then we can get plaque buildup on it, and then we can have a problem. These plaque deposits build up over time in the walls of the arteries, laying the foundation for heart disease. As blood flow becomes more restricted, you might notice some of these symptoms. Fatigue, you just don't feel like you have any energy and are tired all the time. Confusion or brain fog, you have trouble remembering things, dates, or names. And weakness in your arms, legs, and whole body. Don't ignore these warning signs, especially if you are overweight, have high blood pressure, or diabetes. It could be just a matter of time before your arteries become completely blocked and cause a heart attack. Don't become another victim of our nation's number one killer, heart disease. The time to act is now. Start by kicking your sugar addiction. Pick one item in your diet that is filled with sugar and get rid of it. So I would get my patients to look at one food they're doing in their daily diet, you know, cut it in half, cut it in quarter, and eventually try to get rid of it. And when that happens, the sugar cravings tend to evaporate. So over time, less sugar means less heart disease. Next, begin to fight the battle of the bulge. Weight around your waistline is the main trouble spot for heart disease. It's estimated that people who carry belly fat are twice as likely to die from heart disease and diabetes. This is a battle you can't afford to lose. An easy place to start is by cutting back on bread. So Americans, you know, eat way too much bread and, and they're getting, you know, wheats that I believe aren't good for you. Uh, and, and, and the secret is, is less is more. You know, instead of buying bread all the time, just buy it maybe once a week or once every two weeks and put it in your refrigerator and use it as a treat, not as a staple. Look around your kitchen and throw out processed food items. Check the label. If there's an ingredient you can't pronounce, chances are this is a food item that needs to go. When shopping, load your cart with fruits and vegetables and get rid of bad fats and replace them with good ones. You know, when it comes to fats, <coughs> I call it the good, the bad, or the ugly. Let's look at the ugly. These are the trans fats, like microwave popcorn has a lot of trans fat in it. I mean, you really should avoid it. Um, because trans fats are killer fats. They elicit inflammation. When it comes to monounsaturated fats, like found in olive oil, these are phenomenal. These are great fats. In studies with olive oil, it shows that people get less heart disease and less stroke and less diabetes. Another important way to protect your heart is to reduce stress. Several studies have shown that chronic stress is bad for your heart. Out of control stress is deadly. Early in my career as a cardiologist, I realized that stress was a much bigger factor than cholesterol in the genesis of heart disease. I saw so many situations of acute stress, you know, giving people acute heart attacks. You know, one of the problems with adulthood is we don't play enough. We don't laugh enough. I and mean, you take the average child, I mean, an average child can laugh four to 500 times a day. The average adult is maybe 15 times. I mean, laughter really brings what we call good endorphins into the body. So, you know, when it comes to health, I mean, it's not rocket science. Take a hard look at your diet and make healthy changes. Kick your sugar addiction and reduce stress. 
The Bible says that a merry heart is good medicine. Make it a point to laugh, play, and enjoy your life. What I would change if I could reset time are just the habits I built. You know, from an early age, um, learning to, to eat better, learning what's good for you, what's not good for you. For the most part, I do the best I can, get all my nutrition in, and then grease on Saturday. <laughs> well, I'll probably watch what I eat more, probably exercise more, which I need to do now. I would probably regularly exercise and sleep better from day one. No, I'm probably going to eat something really fatty and gross in there when I leave this interview. <laughs> I definitely quit drinking and smoking. That's habits that's hard to break, but I wouldn't drink and smoke if I had to do all this. When it comes to lifestyle choices we've made, we'd all like a second chance. Baseball Hall of Famer Mickey Mantle once said, if I knew I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. The good news is you can hit the reset button on your health and enjoy more energy. Here's how. Dr. Michael Roizen is the chief wellness officer of the Cleveland Clinic and a New York Times bestselling author. In his book, This Is Your Do-Over, The Seven Secrets to Losing Weight, Living Longer, and Getting a Second Chance at the Life You Want, he says that getting your do-over starts with finding a buddy. What we found is the most important thing in getting a do-over is having a buddy that will help you, encourage you. Often it was a buddy who's just been a little ahead of you. When looking for someone to partner with in your do-over, make sure they are committed to the cause. Accountability is key. Be willing to be open about your struggles. Remember, you are teaming up for success. Then you need to get moving. Your next step is all about the benefits of physical activity. It starts with walking 10,000 steps each day. 10,000 is the number that for the majority of us breaks down insulin resistance, meaning your sugar goes from your bloodstream where it is a hazard into your cells where it actually does you good. If you want to get healthy, you've got to keep moving. Here's some simple ways to get started. Take the stairs. Park your car farther away from the entrance when going to work or shopping. Have a walking meeting with your coworkers or friends and family. Remember, those extra steps add up. And you build up slowly because you don't want to get injured. If you're doing fine at 6,000 steps, don't go to 10,000 the next day, go to 6,600. Because you never want to do 10% more than you've done because that's how you injure yourself. Now that you're walking, you want to add resistance and cardio training. Make sure that you work with your buddy. Don't try to do this alone. Together, you'll get the daily encouragement you need to keep going. Walking gives you 50% of the total benefit, but resistance training is moving your body against gravity, and you need about 15 minutes twice a week to get the benefits. Keep healthy by getting your heart rate up three times a week for 20 minutes. You can do this with low impact exercises like swimming, cycling, or even dancing. That's right, you can dance your way to a stronger heart. Here's one idea you probably aren't expecting, jump. 20 jumps a day in the morning, 20 in the evening. It's the best for building bone increasing bone mass of spine and hips. And remember, as we get older, it is falling down and breaking a spine or a hip that has a huge mortality and disability risk. The minimum you have to do for maximum health benefit, 10,000 steps a day, 20 minutes, three times a week of cardio, 15 minutes, twice a week of resistance, and the 40 jumps, 20 in the morning, 20 in the evening, for your bone mass. That's all it takes. Americans like to eat. According to the USDA, the average American consumes nearly one ton of food per year. A lot of what we eat just isn't good for us. 
We need a do-over of what's on our dinner plates. The key is love food that loves you back. Start by adding more fruits and vegetables to your dinner table. A good rule of thumb is, if it's green, it will help keep you lean. So go ahead and eat those veggies. They really are good for you. And make sure you watch out for the food felons. These foods aren't your friends. Simple sugars, added syrups, stripped carbohydrates, saturated fat, and then trans fat. So those five foods are the food felons. Everything else is great. The next step in your do-over is developing healthy habits to replace the bad habits that have you stuck. The real difference between an addiction and a habit is, does it do harm to you? To break an addiction, you need another high to break a high. And so you want to find something you love doing, but is healthy. Your last do-over is finding your passion. What is it that gets you up in the morning and out the door? To find the answer to that question, Dr. Roizen says you need to explore life and see it as a gift to be enjoyed. So it is having a passion is really trying some new things, new groups, new people to meet, do literally things you would never think you'd do, you know? So you'll find something that you love to do that'll wake you up and that gets you going. That's what you want. So what are you waiting for? Today is the first day of your do-over. Get a buddy, exercise, eat a healthy diet, kick the stress habit, and be filled with a passion for life. Your do-over can be a great adventure that leads you to a healthy heart and a wonderful life. Pray and ask God to help you. Jesus told us he came to bring us abundant life. He will help you on your journey to good health.